Welcome, and thank you for joining me for another Random Gaming News, where today we're going to take a look at the backwards compatibility for the PS5, why Valve isn't making another Half-Life game, and more. Make sure to check out that sweet social media stuff down in the description below, and while you're at it, go ahead and share this video to help out the channel the most, hit the like button if you do enjoy today's video, subscribe if you haven't already with that bell icon turned on, and let's go ahead and start the show. So let's go ahead and start off with talking about the backwards compatibility with the PS5 and what actually is going on with that. So last week we got a very long talk from Mark Zern over at, from Sony about all the techs and specs that were going into the actual PS5 and what it's going to, you know, how it's actually going to play and those kind of things. But there were a lot of questions left about the back catalog and whether or not it would actually be coming over from the PS4 to the PS5 or is this going to be something like the PS3 where a lot of stuff didn't really show up. Um, and it got even more confusing that even during the speech that Mark Zern was giving, he showed the top 100 games uh, that were played from the actual PSN uh, network there, and those were the only ones that really brought up on whether or not they were backwards compatible with the actual PS5, and it left a lot of people wondering whether or not they were going to get to play other games or just these uh, top 100 games. Well, Sony then later clarified in a statement that, we're expecting backward compatible titles to run at boosted frequencies on PS5 so they can benefit from higher and more stable frame rates and potentially higher resolution. We're currently evaluating games on a title by title basis to spot any issues that might need adjustments from the original software developers. In his presentation, Mark Zerny provided a snapshot into the top 100 most played PS4 titles, demonstrating how well our backward compatibility efforts are going. We are already tested hundreds of titles, and we're preparing to test thousands more as we move towards launch. We will provide updates on backwards compatibility along with much more PS5 news in the months ahead. Stay tuned. Now, it would seem that we got a little bit more clarification when it does come to the backwards compatibility of the PS5 because, you know, it is one of those things they aren't going to have a big library on the launch. They'll have a few games, but they're not going to have a lot of games to keep people on it. Um, whereas, you know, Xbox has already come out and said that a lot of the Xbox 360 games that are already backwards compatible for the Xbox One and the original Xbox games that are compatible with the Xbox One can also play on the Xbox Series X. So they already have that big library that they've kind of th thrown out there for everybody, whereas the PS5 really didn't talk about it much. Now we know that they are working on making most of the games, if not all of the PS4 games, backwards compatible with the PS5, which is a great thing for consumers because it only gives them a big library on an awesome or, you know, if not the best SSD I've ever seen, hands down, because we're going to see, you know, these some of these older games that have very long load screens like Skyrim or, you know, any of the Final Fantasy games at times had longer load screens, like Final Fantasy VII especially had some long ones. Um, but it's one of those things that we're going to see all those kind of go away to the wayside because with something that can bring out data nine gigs of data at once and if a game's not even nine gigs big that's going to instantly loading the game you know right off the bat so we're going to see a lot of different kind of styles and things that you can do maybe even some more different speed runs come out of things like that because you can get through those load screens a lot faster uh be interesting to see what actually happens with the ps5 when it does actually launch because they have stuck hard on their launch schedule so they're still planning on launching this holiday se season, even with everything going on. So we'll have to wait and see what news actually comes out from this later on this year. So moving right along to Half-Life, and while we won't be getting Half-Life 3 anytime soon, so Gabe Newell actually did an interview with IGN recently where pretty much it boils down to two major things. One, that you know Valve didn't want to just keep on cranking out Half-Life titled year after year just to meet numbers, to make them uh, more money and all that kind of thing. They wanted to hold the title to an actual higher standard of quality than most other games and stuff that would do something like that, especially game companies that have a big hit on their hand like Valve did with the Half-Life series. They made two awesome games that were actually, you know, quite notably revolutionary. When it comes to playing stuff like, you know, first-person shooters, they changed how narrative were actually made and actually how some of the actual mechanics. And that brings us along to point number two, where Valve actually changed the landscape of how first-person shooters were played and how the actual mechanics were worked, because before they were very clunky and didn't feel very lifelike. They wanted to make a system that did feel a lot more like 
lifelike so they built an entire new engine to run half-life 2 which took them a very long time to do and was very tedious and tumultuous to actually do something along those lines so they didn't want to do that again where they were trying to achieve the same feat that they did with half-life 2 with making a completely new engine com making completely new mechanics that were new to first person shooters at the time um it, it was just one of those things that they just wanted to you know kind of hold off from that and keep it easy and then they started getting into selling games and that brought us over to you know having steam which is the biggest pc storefront for selling games on pc so it's one of those things that you know i feel like they don't need to make a lot of games because they make a lot of money like i think it was like 4.2 billion dollars in revenue that they made just in last year alone so i feel like you know valve has a good model for their business so they haven't had a full need to make other half-life games or to put their efforts into making new engines and putting all their efforts into something that may not live up to the standard or quality that players want whereas they can continue doing the steam thing where they just make money off of selling games and being basically a third party vendor at that point so i it's something we'll have to kind of wait and see if they change their mind on that because they are getting into making more and more games they have said that they want to make more and more games so they're going to be working on other titles and different things coming out and have even hinted at maybe artifact coming out um, sometime soon so we'll, we'll wait and see and if any new info comes, I'll definitely let it go your guys' way. Lastly here, just a couple of quick little news nuggets for you. So we have Unity actually giving away three months of Unity Learn Premium. So that's just something where you guys can actually go and learn how to actually code 2D and 3D games using the Unity platform. So that way, it kind of gives you another you know tool in your arsenal of things that you can do because it allows you to go out there and use Unity as a platform to then go and learn something that you may be able to take out into the real world so i think that's pretty awesome and you should take them up on it there's a link in the description if you guys are interested lastly we have microsoft with mojin and you know they are famous for making minecraft and they've actually added some mods where kids can actually learn some stuff using minecraft and it's pretty awesome to see that a you know both of these companies are doing things like this where we have unity giving away some stuff to learn how to do something that can actually benefit you in the real world or microsoft using minecraft as an educational tool for children to learn something because right now a lot of schools at least in my area are shut down for the next 30 days so this is just a way that they're kind of doing their part to allow children to come back and do something that is maybe a little more fun than just sitting around playing on their tablets or playing just minecraft regularly well that's our video for today go ahead and let me know that you guys did enjoy it by hitting the like button for me and leave your thoughts about anything down in the comments below like are you going to take unity up on their three months of free unity learn pro and what's going on with that ps5 backwards compatibility stuff go ahead and leave those thoughts down in those comments below make sure you guys are checking out the description for all that sweet social media stuff so you can follow me over on twitter and the new facebook page that i created for the channel share this video to help out the channel the most hit the subscribe button if you guys haven't already with that bell icon turned on and as always i have been tasty this has been random gaming news and have a wonderful fucking gaming night